Welcome back to our Collegians. It's the 28th annual Phyllis Schlafly Collegian Summit. It's our second year virtually, and I promise you next year we'll be back in person. We we uh, we don't really, uh, this is not as much fun, So, but we're glad to be here, and we're really grateful. Two years in a row, uh, Ted Cruz has come by to be with us. Very kind of him. Uh, he's really always been generous. There was lots of things I can list about uh, Ted Cruz. You know, one of the things I think people forget, I remember this, is he was arguing cases before the Supreme Court and the appellate courts as Solicitor General of Texas yep. in the middle of all these things all these fights that are happening now in our public life he was litigating cases at the highest level up and down and he clerked for the Supreme Court of course but what is most exciting is in the last 24 hours again Ted Cruz was able to do something and the left goes bonkers he he said the Pledge of Allegiance on on flag day and they went crazy so Senator Ted Cruz of Texas thanks for being with us you know I gotta say the left is, is so predictable how they're treated <laughs> and true. literally the entire tweet is me standing in front of a flag <laughs> saying the pledge that's it no commentary it, it's got over three million views in, in less than 24 hours I, I, I'll tell you right now, my next plan is, is, <laughs> is to do something singing Jesus Loves Me. They, they, they will lose their minds. They I, really mean, I mean, they just, That's it, true. It, it, it's sort of like like, like, like a, a vampire in sunlight. They react the same way. <laughs> do you think, though, being serious for a second, you've watched the trajectory, you've lived the trajectory of cancel culture. These kids yeah. who say, don't tweet anything controversial because you'll pay for it 10 years from now, but I only half kidding. But the, the way to the cancel yeah. culture and all, and... Are they going to do that to the pledge? They want to. L listen, the left hates America. They're not <laughs> hiding it anymore. Right? Th these are the idiots who, who are rioting all across the country and, and shooting police officers and burning down businesses. These are the people who are toppling monuments of George Washington and Abraham Lincoln and Thomas Jefferson and James Madison and Frederick Douglass, because yeah. apparently Frederick Douglass, was, was, the, the, the great abolitionist, was, was not woke enough for them. This is idiocy, and, and, and it is driven by a hard Marxist rage at America. But it is idiocy, but you've seen idiocy, and you're, you're, you're somebody who studied so much of the history and by the way one of the books one, one the newest book one vote away how a single supreme court seat can change history by ted cruz and we started talking off the air about uh, justice Breyer maybe retiring the power of the court but but i want to ask a broader question you've seen idiocy yeah. right you've you've seen in the history where things will go one way or another right there'll be call it what you want different movements and all the 60s but this idiocy it seems to me is supercharged yep. by by big tech and by the brainwashing of media. Yes. And my question is, if they have that, it now turns from a wave that goes out and comes back. You know, we go, okay, this is silly, but you know, by 1979, we get rid of this and go Reagan. Now we've got a wave that it's supercharged like a tsunami. Yeah. And, yeah. and can you stop it? Absolutely. Okay, um, good. Look, the left is about power and it's about government. The left are totalitarians. They are statists. They believe in government power. They want to control who you are. They want to control what you do. They want to control what you do with your money. They want to control what you say. They want to control your faith. They want to control every aspect of your life. Um, and they're brutal about enforcing it. It's why cancel culture exists, because they want to silence you. Right. They use, look, look, one operative principle to keep in mind is just big is bad. Big government is bad, big business is bad, big tech is bad, big Hollywood is bad. All massive accumulations of power get abused. Right. As conservatives, one of the great things we believe in is the individual, the power of the individual. I'm all for the little guy, I'm for the small business, I'm for the young person out there who you just want to speak, you want to say what you think. When it comes to faith, you want to worship God, it's, it, that's between you and, and God Almighty. Mm -hmm. And, and, and you, that you should not have government or anyone else silencing you for for living according to your faith living according to your conscience and so you ask can it be stopped yes because freedom is powerful freedom is is, is like a flame it's contagious I, look what young person wants a bunch of angry puritanical jerks <laughs> controlling every aspect of their life right and and freedom is fun I mean you don't talk about so one of the things I encourage conservatives, particularly young conservatives, don't respond in kind. When, when the left is, are, are these shrill, angry, screaming, right. judgmental souls, 
respond with laughter, respond with joy, be happy warriors. And you mentioned before the 1970s, I actually think there's a very strong parallel uh, between the 1970s, Jimmy Carter, and Joe Biden. I think Joe Biden is Jimmy Carter 2.0. We're seeing many of the same things. We're seeing a gas crisis, an inflation crisis, war in the Middle East. Iran on the rise. All of those policies are playing out. And, and Reagan came along as a, as a happy, sunny warrior who, who, who didn't respond with fury. He responded with joy and belief in America. That's powerful. It was powerful then, and it's powerful but, now. But, but Reagan did something from 76, after he loses, he goes and does those radio commentaries. They later found the handwritten legal yeah, pads yeah. where he really wrote them. Oh, they're blew spectacular. Away the, and they blew away yeah. all these idiots that said somebody else wrote it. You know, uh, 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 John Schlafly is earlier, he is obsessed with Obama and Obama's, not his birth certificate, he got off that, but Obama's books. And he says they're ghostwritten. You know, Jack Cashel wrote a book about it. So we'll talk about that again later. But, but back to this. Yes, but Reagan did that, right? So Reagan goes out and says, yeah, look, watch what I think. But he did it on radio. became immensely yeah. popular. Yeah. But right now, how do conservatives and young people, how do we think about big tech? How do, we, how do we not become censors like them? Like somehow we're saying, shut up the idiots, Antifa's idiots, shut them up. Well, wait a second, that just is their excuse for the day. $100 million today, Merrick Garland announces to target domestic terrorists. I mean, you know, I mean not, here we are, you know, right? So look, how do we, how do we defeat it? We do what, what you're doing right now. We're broadcasting right now and connecting with people. We, we empower individuals. And, and, and one thing you mentioned, I want to be clear. Listen, conservatives, we don't want to silence the left. You know, you know I had the, the CEO of YouTube in my office. Yeah. And I was asking her why YouTube was going after and attacking Steven Crowder. Steven Crowder is a comedian. He's a little salty. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. But, but, but he's libertarian. He's funny, like most comedians. He says some things that are a little bit obnoxious, and that's, right. that's part of comedy. Um, YouTube decided they didn't like what he was saying. They said everything he said was consistent with their rules, right. but it didn't fit their politics. So, so you know, I asked her about why, why they were going after him, and she said, well, you got to understand, People on the left were arguing with us that we should ban him. We should silence him altogether, and we didn't do that. We just demonetized him. <laughs> I mean, what an Orwellian word. Yeah. We just made his income disappear. Right. And I put it out. I said, listen, I want you to understand something very carefully. It is only one side that is asking you to censor. I'm not here saying silence the left. Right. Bernie Sanders, AOC, those guys are numbskulls. I want people to hear what they have to say. <laughs> Their ideas don't work. Right. It, it is only the left that wants to use the power to silence their opposition. So what do we do? We do what you're doing right now. Last year, I launched a podcast. That's right. Verdict it's with Ted Cruz. Yeah, it's huge hit, right? You know, go subscribe to Verdict with Ted Cruz. We yeah. put it out every week. Last year, it became the number one ranked podcast in the world. Yeah. Um, the book you mentioned, One Vote Away, that became the number one bestseller in the country on Amazon. All of these are tools to get around the gatekeeper, to get around the media, to get around social media, to get straight to people. And the great thing about a podcast, you know, I do about one a week and it's about 30 minutes. We've had over 30 million downloads of the Verdict podcast. And, wow. and there's nobody in the corner office of CNN deciding if what you topics I could address, what I got to say on them. Right. That's powerful, and the more we decentralize and empower individuals, the better we are. That book is called One Vote Away, One Vote Away, How a Single Supreme Court Seat Can Change History. That reminds me, I have two questions I want to ask you as we finish up. We're talking with Ted Cruz, and you can Ted Cruz is everywhere, especially saying the Pledge of Allegiance on his Twitter feed. <laughs> Their heads are exploding. Two questions we're asking every one of our guests. What can, can, what can, can you start to say it, conservative young people be doing right now? to fight for what they believe in. You started saying, you know, get your voice out there. What else? Well, look, and I, and I want everyone listening to this to realize, you've got a voice right now. You don't have to wait till you're 30 or 40 or 50 or 60. You've got a voice today. You have a social media voice. You have friends. You have colleagues. Speak creatively. God has given you an incredibly fun and interesting mind. So, so explain what freedom matters to you. Explain why it matters to you. Explain what it means to have free speech, what it means to have religious liberty, what it means for the, for the Second Amendment and to have the right to defend yourself. And, and use humor. Mm -hmm. Tell stories. Um, every one of you are better positioned to connect with young people, with your peers, with your classmates, frankly, than any of us are. Yeah. 
you can speak with a real credibility and 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 use that platform uh, to win hearts and minds. That's how we win ultimately. We've got to win hearts and minds. One last uh, question: What motivates you? And you went through. You've been through like almost nobody in the public life now. I mean, even though Trump gets beat up, he kind of always asked for it. I mean, it's kind of his MO, <laughs> right, from the 80s on. You went through, you ran for president, you went through all this shit. How do you not, I mean, everybody gets tired. How do you, how do you, how do you, what motivates you to keep fighting, keep up the fight? I remember who I'm working for. Um, I, I work for 29 million Texans, and, and I remember every one of them. I remember the little old lady in East Texas who grabbed me by the shoulder when I was first running, and she said, Ted, please. Don't go to Washington and become one of them. <laughs> and, and, and if you remember who you're working for, then I'm gratified when they come after me. And listen, in any moment, in the time we've been sitting yeah, here, <laughs> a thousand people on Twitter have cursed me out. Yes, it's what yes, lefties see, do. Yeah, that's right. Um, and, and, and it's interesting. As, as soon as Trump left office, many of the people yeah. that attacked Trump they all day long, yeah, they're, they're, right. they're, they're coming after me. <laughs> I actually am encouraged by that. That may be a sign of mental illness. So, um, <laughs> but but here's why I'm encouraged. If 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 the bad guys are mad at what you're doing, right? Then you're doing something right. If they're not shooting at you, you you're not doing anything. There's a great. Do you happen to watch? Uh, the, the, there's a series on Netflix called The Crown. No. No, I don't. I don't. I think my wife. Somebody watches it in my house, but not me. So it's it's fabulous. I I watch a lot of lot of things. And actually, a lot of less highfalutin things in the Crown. The uh-huh. Crown is 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 pretty. Uh, is that about America or England or it, England? It's, it's about England. England. Yeah, it's, I only it's, watch America. I only watch American programming. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's it's Queen Elizabeth, and so okay. it starts oh, off when good. she she's very very young, and it goes goes through. So the most recent season is in the eighties, and she is. Um, She's queen, and she's talking with Margaret Thatcher. And Margaret Thatcher, I adore. I know you do. Oh, she yeah. was Amazing. just, I mean... She's like Britain's Phyllis Schlafly. I, it, it, <laughs> it, 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 they, they were cut from the same cloth. That's right. I think that's right. And, and there's a great exchange in, in The Crown where, where the queen asks Margaret Thatcher. Um, she, she, said, she, she asked her what, if she, why she was standing and fighting. And she said, well, it depends on whether you're okay having enemies. And Queen Elizabeth says, are you? Are you okay with having enemies? And Thatcher leans forward and says, oh, yes. And she recites this poem, which I'm embarrassed to say I can't remember the poem, but go Google it okay. because it is so awesome. Right. And, and it is a poem about you have no enemies, you say. Uh, what a weak boast that is mm. because that means you've never, I'm going to paraphrase right. now, you've never stood for anything. You've never... Huh. Uh, what is it? Something like not the the cup from the coward's lip. You've never stood up and called the lie uh-huh. uh, and responded with truth. Um, you know, anyone doing anything that matters. If you're taking on the bad guys, they're going to be mad. Right. And if they're not mad, <clears throat> you're not doing it. Right. You're not doing it. I've said before, the day the New York Times praises me is the day I'm resigning. <laughs> you retire, and yeah. it ain't happening anytime. Well, don't tell soon. them that because they might do it. <laughs> they they might problem. just That's test it. Yeah, exactly. But well, you know what? It, 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 they they would probably burst into flames as they wrote the words. Yeah. Probably. All right. One vote away. How a single Supreme Court seat can change history is that newest book. I can't. I'd remiss if I didn't ask you. KBJ, this judge was up, uh, moved up to the Court of Appeals today. You probably know all these people a little bit or over the years. She, she's. I've heard from people. She's likely to be Biden's pick for the Supreme Court if he gets a vacancy. What's your What's your, you know, crystal ball tell you? Hey, you know, I I think that's certainly possible. Um, she's she's an African American woman. She's been on the federal bench for a while. Um, I actually know her. I went to law school with her. Oh, she, you did? She was, she was a year, oh. year behind me in law school. Oh, okay. And look, she was nice and pleasant enough in law school. We worked close. We were both in the law review together. She was she was perfectly fine in law school. Um, she's managed as a district court judge to have, I think, a very careful record and that there's not a whole lot there uh-huh. to demonstrate her jurisprudential ap- approach. Um, I voted no on the Court of Appeals because I'd like to see an affirmative demonstration that someone is a constitutionalist and will be faithful to the Constitution. Right. And also because, listen, Biden was very clear. He made clear his oh. intention was to nominate radical leftists who would undermine our free speech, undermine our religious liberty, undermine our Second Amendment. 
and I assume he knows what he's doing. So if this is who he's putting forward as, as his point person, I assume he has reason to believe she She'll will do, do exactly what he said he would do. And this is a point that's interesting, Ed. The Democrats don't want to talk about what their agenda is on the Constitution. You don't see them defend that they want to take away your free speech rights. You don't see them defend that they want to take away religious liberty. You don't see that they want def them defend that they want to essentially erase the Second Amendment from the Bill of Rights. They know those are wildly unpopular views with the American people. So they try to do it by stealth. And, and, and I think we're seeing that with the Obama judicial nominees already. One last question. I'll stop. I promise I'm going to get yelled at by the guys because we're going too long. College students today, would you tell them to go to law school? Depends. I would say go to law school if you want to be a lawyer. So, you know, I think about when I went to law school, there were a lot of people I knew who just, they finished college, they didn't know what to do, so they're like, well, heck, I don't want to get a job. I'll go to law school. And they hated it. They were miserable. Um, I got to admit, I loved law school. Like, <laughs> I had a blast. But when I was in college, without exaggeration, I took every class with the word law in it. So right. like in undergrad, I took a class in American Indian law. I took a class in Roman law, which is fascinating, right. like, like <laughs> ancient Rome. Right. Um, you know, I read, read books, read books by Bork and Scalia. And so I was fascinated, and I'd studied the Constitution in high school. I mean, yeah, I yeah. knew... I remember that. If you want to be a lawyer... If, if you're interested in the Constitution and Bill of Rights, listen, going to law school can prepare you to be a gladiator. You know, right. when people ask if, if I enjoy being in the Senate, I love every second <laughs> of every minute of the Senate because it's the modern day gladiator. You strap on your, 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 your chest plate and you get your sword and you go in and you battle the the minotaur that was to, january 6th they said they were saying anyway sorry <laughs> so but but it is this is the modern day gladiator arena right where you're fighting for the principles that matter and and legal training helps but yeah. don't go to law school if you're just not sure what to do in life if you're not sure go take a gap year and spend the time in introspection trying to discover what you care about, what your passions are. Ask yourself, when you go to bed at night, what's the last thing you're thinking about? When you wake up in the morning, what's the first thing on your mind? Do that for the rest of your life. You'll be better at it, hmm. and you'll be a heck of a lot happier. Hmm. Good. Ted Cruz. Thank you, Ted Cruz, a senator from Texas. Uh, amazing leader and willing to stand up in the woke culture and all the cancel culture. Read his book, One Vote Away. Uh, now his podcast, The Verdict. Yep. The Verdict. So uh, download that and catch up with the other 30 million. So we're going to take a break right now. We've got a short video from another senator who's uh, fighting there who couldn't be with us, Senator Josh Hawley. So he sent a video and we'll watch that and then we'll be on to some of our other guests. Thanks very much, Ted. Appreciate you being Thanks, here. Thanks, Ted. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you.